I want to talk to you this morning so much on impacting my world. I want you to impact your world. Just think about impacting your world by the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, I believe that we were all here. We all invited. We're all summoned here by the Holy Spirit because He has a divine design for us. He has a supernaturally, he's going to touch some of you. You'll be saved. You'll give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Some of you are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to begin to prophesy. Some will speak in new tongues. And some of you are just going to be really receiving gifts of the Spirit. And you say, well, how that's going to happen? The Holy Spirit is sovereign. He doesn't depend on one person or another. He moves. And I want to show you that this morning, how he's just so powerful. He moves the way he wants to, what he wants to, over those that are seeking him. And if you're seeking him this morning, it's going to be great. Hallelujah. A new time. If you want to write that down, just say a new time. The Holy Spirit bursts into action. 400 years of silence between the Old and the New Testament. And you know what happens? The Holy Spirit just doesn't come and say, well... You know, God's been silent for a while, so he finally decided to talk. No. The Holy Spirit comes, and he just bursts into action, and he fills an unborn baby with his spirit. Now, you think about that. He didn't start with some big prophet or anything. He takes a little baby inside the mother's womb, and he fills him with his spirit. And that's the beginning of the move of the Holy Spirit. He says, I want to move in everybody. If I can touch a little baby inside the mother's womb, I can touch anybody anywhere if they will open their heart. So if you'll open your heart this morning, he will touch you. So what happens? The Father God had a mission for this baby. And he already is filled with the Spirit. And he's just there. And when he sees, when he sees Mary come in, he said, well, he can't see, but he sees in the Spirit. And Jesus comes in. Mary's right there. She's pregnant with Jesus. About six months pregnant. Elizabeth is about almost eight, going on nine months pregnant. And when the two meet, JB just jumps inside of his mother. He goes, Whoa! Come on, everybody, like, go with me. Go, Whoa! Boy, some of you are stuck in them seats. Wow. Come on, guys. One more time. Whoa! And he just jumps inside. And he goes, wow, this is the Savior. This is the Lord. And it's so wonderful because you understand the Spirit doesn't use natural eyes only. He uses the, his own Spirit. He says, I know you in spirit and in truth. I know you not by your physical being, but I know you by what the Spirit is inside of you. And so we see that we were summoned here this morning and that God's Son, Jesus had to have someone go before him and that someone had to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He had to know him. He had to know him in the Spirit and say, yes, I testify. This is the one the Father sent. And J.B. had two ministries. He had a ministry that was really important. And it said he would come in the power and the spirit of Elijah. Well, Elijah was the first Old Testament prophet and he was, I tell you, he was a tough dude. Man, I, he didn't care who you were or where you were. He was going to tell you the truth right in your face. I mean, like in your face. You know, he had no fear of what would happen to him. And that's important because Jotabe didn't either. Jotabe, that's Portuguese. Um, so that's JB for you guys. I'll just say Jotabe because that's in my head, okay? So I, I don't want to say who it is because you'll figure it out, I'm sure. But anyways, uh, JB has an impact on Israel. And God sent him to do three things. To turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. To turn the disobedient to the wisdom of doing what's right. Righteousness. And third, to make ready a people to receive Jesus. He received him. He understood who he was. But he said, I need to prepare a people that will receive Jesus. Now, Jotabe's main ministry was repentance. And that's understandable because if you're going to turn people, the hearts of fathers, back to children, there must be a repentance. I want you to understand something. Many times your children are going to do things that you're going to go, what? <laughs> Where in the world did that come from? 
and you look at your wife and you don't dare say it came from her side of the family because she's going she's gonna to point out your side of the family and go, okay, well, let's let that one go, you know? Uh, so all of a sudden you're going, where in the world did that come from? And you turn your heart off. You turn your heart away from. Not just a cold shoulder. You give them a cold back. I mean, you actually turn away from them. And God is saying that he wants to restore fathers' hearts to their children. Why? Because you need to repent of having put away your only son, your daughter, whoever it may be that that you gave birth to. You can't close your heart to them. You need to repent constantly because they're constantly going to get in your face. They're constantly going to give you going, where? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoever told you that? One of my kids came home one day. And he said a, a swear word. And I said, come here, come here, come here. What does that mean? He says, I don't know. But at school, everybody says it when they're mad. <laughs> and I said, guess what? In this house, we don't say that word. Let's go to the room and have a little conversation. <laughs> and we had a great conversation. After a while. And just, you have to understand that you can say, oh, Oh no, look at what he's doing. And turn your back. You can't turn your back. Everyone has a moment when you must repent and come back. Second, you must also understand that disobedience, we're living in a time of disobedience. Just like in the time of the Romans took over all the land of the Jews of Israel. There was rebellion in the Jewish heart because we're being you know, commanded by a foreign country. They're over us. They're telling us what to do. They're taking our riches. And so what happened? They began to be disobedient against God. The circumstances were difficult, yes, but they were being rebellious against God. And he says, I want to give you the wisdom of going back to God. You must repent from your rebellious heart. Now, don't everybody raise their hand all at once, but who's ever felt rebellious? Go like that, go, hmm. You know, you understand? You, you've never had a rebellious feeling, right? Huh. I'll ask your wife and she'll tell on you. You know, what do you, you understand that rebellion, disobedience is something that we're drawn to. We see it around us all the time. We talk about civil disobedience. But I want you to understand something. The wise thing is to come to God and do what's right. Not what's expedient, not what people want you to do, but do what's right. And the third thing that we need to come back to is that he said that, come here, that we need to make a people ready for the Lord. You know, Jesus was to come as Savior, as Lord, first Lord and Savior. And people had to have their hearts, uh, um, Broken, um, I'm sorry. Sometimes my Portuguese is going to invade my English. But anyways, the idea of being uh, broken before the Lord, of being humbled before the Lord. And it's so important that we understand you can't serve the God with a proud heart. You can't serve Him like, come on, come on. You know, hey God, I'm here. You're lucky I'm here. You don't know how good I am, God. You know, and we have this attitude that brings us into a place where you say, whoa, who in the world do you think you are? And yet, all God has to do is just show us a little bit of who we were. Just a little bit. And we're going to fall on our knees and we're going to cry and repent. And so that's what John the Baptist did. He preached repentance. He preached, break down the pride in your heart. Break down the resistance in your heart. Break down this haughty spirit. And come before him with a broken heart, with an open heart, with a heart that's willing to receive. And so this is, you know, JB, he's just, he's just going away and he's banging away and banging away. And he baptized people into repentance. They had to come to him. And he didn't go in those little pretty rivers. He went some of the dirty rivers. Have you ever been in a dirty river? Boy, to where we live, there's, there's red, the, the, the dirt is red. And the rivers, the waters are red. And so when you get in, you go, this is like 
I'm going to swim in this stuff? <laughs> you can't even see what's inside there. But you go in because you're hot and it's, you're a kid. You go in, you know. And if you're an adult, you love water like me. So the, the whole thing is he's baptizing these people to say we repent of our rebellion against our God, against his word. And we are ready for a new king, someone that God has sent. Now the Holy Spirit, he's impacting a whole family. I want you to see that just real quick with me. God wants to impact your family. Say it with me. Please say it with me. God wants to impact my family. <laughs> Through the power of His Holy Spirit in my life, through my life, and to my family. I believe that that's what He wants to do. And this is what happens with uh, Jotabe, with JB. His whole family is impacted. First, the prophecy over him in Luke chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. He's filled the Holy Spirit from inside his mother's womb. Okay. Um, if you could show that verse up there. Luke 1, 14 through 17. I'd appreciate it. There you go. Um, yeah. You love me, obey my commandments. I will... Boy... Okay, and he will give you another, that's, yeah, okay, but I don't think I said it right then. Luke 1, 14 through 17? Yeah, let's try Luke again, okay, buddy? Everything's going to be in Luke, okay? Just put it in Luke and you'll be okay. I love John because he's the apostle of love, but I'm in Luke. Let's go there. Actually, it's Peter's gospel, but Luke wrote it. Okay. And if we don't get it, that's fine. I got it all right here. Um, so... What happens? He's filled the Holy Spirit inside his mother's womb. And that's what the prophecy said. And he's going to go before Jesus. Now, to me, that is a word that you need to understand. This morning, I want to tell you something. Am I smiling? Are you smiling? I can't tell because those lights are in my eyes, but <laughs> I hope you are. Yeah, that, I, I can see that smile. Hallelujah. Some of you... I don't think that's really a smile, brother, but I'll, you work on that one and we'll make it later, okay? You work on that. Okay, so, oh, no, I didn't have any teeth. That's why you couldn't, okay, got it. Um, I understand that when he does this, what happens? He comes out and his mother, when he, he's birthed, she's filled with the Spirit. So all of a sudden, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit and she starts to prophesy. I mean, I hate to tell you this, but... The gospel is the first real religion that gave women any kind of power or recognition. No other, no other religions are all women are go women. But the gospel, it brings women in and says, you are a part of what I'm doing. It says they baptize men and women. And Elizabeth, she's the first. Her husband's still silent. He can't even talk. And she's there and she receives the Holy Spirit and she begins to prophesy to Mary. She says, Mary, this is going to happen to you. And be encouraged, Mary. And so she gives her a prophetic word that talks about her future as well as she encourages her as a mother of the Lord Jesus. And she talks about Jesus. She prophesies what Jesus is going to do. So you got to think, here's the Holy Spirit inside a baby in the womb. The baby's birth, the mother's still the Holy Spirit. And she begins to prophesy. Now, this is the beginning of the gospel of Peter, of Luke. Now, if you believe that, then what happens? Finally, it's Zachariah's turn, the husband, the father. And he begins to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he prophesies over the whole nation of Israel. He prophesies the ministry of Jesus. He prophesies that the Lord is God, Jesus is God, and that his son is going to go before him and prepare a way. So you got to think, what's happening here? Now, bring it to where you are. Think about where you are. You say, well, pastor, I've never prophesied. They hadn't either. The Holy Spirit hadn't even really been pouring out yet. Like Pastor John preached last week, you know, about the idea of over and uh, upon and the whole thing inside, the whole ball of wax. You know, it's true. The Holy Spirit just came upon them, but He can be in you. Jesus said He's with you and He'll be in you. 
I want you to understand something. Would you do me a favor? Kind of just open your hand like that with your palm up like that. Give a little smile. Give a little smile. Go ahead. Try again. You're going to get there. I know you are. Say, I believe believe that the Holy Spirit Spirit is in me. me. Since the day I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I can speak the word of the Lord to anyone around me, to my family. I don't have to close my eyes. I don't have to go, this is the word of the Lord. No, I can go. How many understood? How many understood? You understand that? What you can do is go, you know what? You know, I felt this about you. Did you dream something these last few days? You did. Was it about this? It was. Well, and did you get the message? Well, I wasn't sure. Well, maybe the message is this. That's the Holy Spirit leading you through a prophecy, a revealing. The vision came to them. The dream came to them. But the Holy Spirit is saying, I gave them. It's a word of knowledge. You don't have to, you know, who, who, who. I don't know if you still do that here in America, but used to when I was here, you know, if you were really Pentecostal, you know. But you have to understand, God doesn't want that, doesn't need that. The authentication of what's being done is the transformation of the heart. That's what it is. It's not how many times I kick my feet in the floor or go, oh, oh. No. It has to do with what? It has to do with the person saying, that's true. How did you know that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves you. He's talking to you. Not, I've received a word for you. Not necessary. Not necessary. Don't put a weight on yourself you don't need. Share it. Give it. So what happens? So Zechariah prophesies. And you know what? The whole family now is involved in the move of the Spirit. And John the Baptist, the word says in Luke 1, 16 and 17, that he would go in the power and the Spirit of Elijah. Elijah, as I said, that very first prophet, strong, powerful man that confronted sin, that confronted authorities that were evil. And John the Baptist goes out and he says what? He says, this woman that you're living with. No way, Jose. And what happened? Yes, he was persecuted for it. But you know what? He brought thousands and thousands and thousands to God. You have to understand something. People don't always like to see their friends changed. I don't know what, when I was in college, Friday night was the night everybody got drunk, right? I didn't, but they did. We gotta buy a couple six packs and let's go have some fun. That's Friday night. I mean, if you didn't do that, what were you gonna do on Friday night? Go to church? I did. You know what the heck? What can you do, you know? Some people are different. You have to understand that what's here says, I don't have to be like everybody else is, I can go against the culture. Because I believe in a culture that's greater, that's more powerful, that's life transforming. It transforms, it changes you from the inside out, not from the outside in. That's key to me. Now I want you to show you one more person real quick before I pray with you. Yeah, I'm doing good. There's a man that seeks the truth. And this morning, if you're here and you're a truth seeker, then I want you to find the spirit of truth. Jesus said he is the spirit of truth and he'll come to you. Now, this man, his name is called Cornelius. And he sought the truth. He wanted to know what was true. And the first thing he understood with those, all those gods in, in Roman culture, he was a, a soldier, a very high up soldier in the Roman army. But he said, all these gods are kind of 
he had to sacrifice this one and cut that one and do this and do that and do this. He said, but he came and he met the Jewish people. And he said, we serve the one true God. And so he begins to pray. He begins to give offerings. He begins to do a lot, a lot of things, be devout to God. Everybody recognized, all the Jews said, wow, this, this, this soldier, he's a great guy. He does everything he's supposed to do. He wasn't a Christian yet, but he was a great Jew, a converted Jew. But what happens? One day, he has a vision, and he's seeking truth. Now, I want to say something to you. Please listen. You may have gone to different religions, to different places. You've drunk from different fountains. I, don't, I haven't been in America for a long time, so I don't know how to say all the nice little things that where you could go. But I'm sure you all know where you could possibly go to find some kind of a truth, right? Well, in Brazil, we have all kinds of, uh, from different cultures, from different uh, divisions. We have all places that talk about truth. But they talk about truths. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. No truths, not a bunch of little things written down. I have a spirit of truth within me. And when you receive me, I am truth. My words are truth. My life is truth. My example is truth. My work in you is truth. It's not a bunch of things written on the wall. And we don't serve a bunch of things written on the wall. We serve a living man who became God who became man for us. And he's there interceding for us because he says, if you'll seek truth, my spirit of truth will come to you and he will show you me. He will reveal, reveal who I am, what I do. And that's a key this morning. So when we talk about this man, we understand that he was seeking truth. He wanted it. The apostle Peter was used three times over three different peoples to bring the power of the Holy Spirit to these people. First, you know really well Acts 2, 1 through 4. He stands up and he says, Fellow Jews who live in Jerusalem, let me explain to you. And he talks about Jesus because he and 120 other people were just filled with the Holy Spirit. 120 Jews were filled with the Holy Spirit. And from that day on, they began to evangelize. And everywhere they went, Jews were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, he comes to Samaria. The Samarians were people that were partially Jewish and partially Gentile. So they were uh, intermingled. And for the Jews, they, didn't, they weren't worth anything because you, a Jew couldn't marry someone of a different race. But what happens Peter goes to them because the Holy Spirit said, I've received a people that believe my word. Go and lay your hands on them. So let's get this right now. First in Acts 2, what happens? They're there, they're praying for 10 days, and all of a sudden, wow, the Holy Spirit comes over them. I love this part. I love it. I love it. You're all there, you know, everybody's kind of, man. Go, go like this one. Man, we've been praying here for 10 days. Give me a face like 10 days. Go ahead. I like that. I like that. So, you know, here we've been 10 days praying, and all of a sudden, they go, oh, hey, buddy, you got fire on top of your head. He says, so do you. And all 20 of them, 120 of them had fire. And then all of a sudden, the fire goes from top of their head right inside of them. And they're going, whoa. And they start talking, and and they're all going around hundred yama my shot on the and they're all going, Wow, this must be what Jesus promised us. Now what I love about that verse, for Acts two, it's like about five or six, it says, and the sound was heard in all Jerusalem. And the Jews were saying, we're tired of this feast. Listen to that sound. And they all started going towards it. What sound was it? It was the Holy Spirit saying, come here, come here. I want to tell you something. People around you are hearing a sound. 
People around you are dreaming dreams. They're having visions. In the, in the, um, uh, yeah. the world of Muslims, they're dreaming dreams of Jesus. He comes to them, he shows them their hands, and he shows them their side, and they're converting because they believe that dreams are from God. And by the thousands they're coming to Jesus. That's what happened that day to the Jews. They heard a voice and said, wow, this voice is different. We've never heard it. And Peter stands up and preaches the gospel to them. You have a people that want to hear the voice that's around you. When you talk, when you speak. When you talk and when you speak, these people are going, wow, there's something different. Saturday morning, I'm in my Bermudas and my flip-flops and T-shirt. And someone knocks at my door. I open the door and they throw this woman, this demon-possessed, on my front, my front room floor and they run. What happened? And, you, and you, she's, you know, doing the thing that demon people, people do. She's like, ah, yeah, you know. And I say, whoa, 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 whoa. This isn't it. This is not right. This is the home. Jesus is Lord of my home. And demon, you can't stay. I'll let the woman stay, but you can't. Out. Out. And Terry came right away, and that demon had to leave. So I said, well, lady, she woke up kind of like, where am I? You know, the whole where am I thing. And I go, well, <laughs> actually, it doesn't matter where you are. You're in my house. But you're going to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior right now. So we pray, and she accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior. I said, all right, you same vergonias, you, you without shamers, come here. I pick this woman up and take her home. But first, you have to pray with me. It wasn't a church service. I wasn't ready. But how many of you know that when the Holy Spirit's there, you're ready. Hallelujah. Turn that person beside you and say, you're ready, man. Go ahead. Turn that person. You're ready. It's time. And so she's free. She delivered. She accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. Those two men, I'm not sure what they did exactly, but they at least prayed. Now, why am I telling you this? Because I want you to understand that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to put on special clothes. You don't have to say, Bible underneath your Okay. Who wants Jesus? Here, take a track, you sinner. No. You understand? That's not it. That's not the way you do it. What do you do? Wherever you are. I was in the bank a couple of years ago, and, and the, the person in front of me, the gerente do banco, huh? Yeah, the manager of the bank was sitting right there in front of me, and I just felt the Holy Spirit said, she's in deep darkness. She's in, she's in troubled spirit. Pray for her. Come on, come on. This is a bank. I mean, here you have those little places in here where they close the door and everything. There's no doors to close. She was just me and her and all these people. And I go, could I pray for you? She kind of did the same thing. I said, let me pray for you. And I said, just put your hand out here. I'll just touch you real quick. And as I did, the Lord gave me a word for her. I touched her hand. He gave me a word for her. She cried right there. And she's the manager. She cried and she said, I needed that. Now, you see, I didn't go in there. I had a problem. <laughs> I needed some money out of that bank. <laughs> and it wasn't working. <laughs> but Jesus didn't have me because I wasn't getting money. He had me there for that woman. Do you understand? Open your eyes. Open your spiritual eyes. Say, yes, I can do this. I can be there. Now, to be filled with the Spirit... It's not just to receive one thing. You're going to receive right now. We're going to pray for that to happen right now. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to speak in a new tongue. Now, I didn't speak in tongues with the woman right there in front of me in the bank. When they threw the demonic woman on top of my floor, I didn't pray in tongues. I prayed in tongues before. 
I was filled with the Spirit. And that's what you have to understand. Always be filled. Wherever you're going to go someplace, don't go empty. Okay. Could you loan me your finger just for a minute? Just put your little finger up there. I'll give it back. I promise. I'll give it back. Loan, you, loan me your finger. There you go. Go. Let's see. Don't go empty. Don't go anywhere empty. <laughs> because God may give you an opportunity right there. So pray up, be filled, and so when you get there, you're ready. You're on it. You're, you're on your game. So what's going to happen? So here he is. Here he is. He's there. And Peter comes. The Jews on, the, on the Act, Acts 2, the Samarians Act 8, Acts 8, and then in Acts 10 and 11, they begin to believe the word that Peter's preaching. And Peter, Peter loves to preach like I do, and he took too long. And the Holy Spirit, Pete, I'm sorry, buddy. Just taking too long. And he fell on all of them. And all of them received. So before that happens, I'm going to quit preaching. <laughs> and I want you to do two things. First, I want you to give your heart to the Lord Jesus. Now, what happens here? is different because remember in Samaria he put his hand on them they accepted the word and he put his hand on them but here it doesn't show them getting saved so I believe it's sine qua non that's Latin for it happened at the same time simultaneously they were saved and filled with the spirit right there and I believe that that's what's going to happen this morning for you and for me you're going to come up here and I'm going to explain it to you. So listen real good. Listen real good. We're going to do it, as Frank Sinatra said, my way. Okay? <laughs> you know? And if Frank said it, it's said, right? No, so we're going to do it my way. And, and my way is real easy. You're going to come up here. You're going to keep your eyes open. Would you pray you always close your eyes? I know that, but I forgive you. Keep your eyes open. Because in Brazil, people fall asleep, not physically, spiritually. And they travel. They go somewhere else. And they, they miss the whole rest of the meeting. So you're going to keep your eyes open. You're going to smile if possible. If possible. I believe it's possible. Yeah, I'm smiling. You're smiling. Okay? And you're going to begin to say, Mind, be quiet. You have always controlled my tongue. But now, the Holy Spirit within me is authorizing me. He's giving me the power to speak a language I've never learned. And this language is going to build me up spiritually. So I encounter darkness. The spirit here says, mm, darkness, no way. Back, back. Because he is greater than anything out there, anything out there. You understand that? So this morning, let's going to do that, okay? Would you please is stand up right where you are. Those of you who have never been filled with the Holy Spirit, when I say that, I mean sine qua non. It's to us, it's the same as speaking in tongues. It's not, you know, good, ooh, ooh, I had an experience. Ooh, ha, ah, ooh. You see that? Ooh, all those goosebumps. No, it's not goosebumps. It's actually talking in a new language, okay? So what I want you to do, you say, uh, I want Jesus as Lord and Savior. But I believe I can be filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. Or if you already accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, come, no matter what your situation is. Haven't been baptized in water yet. No problem. You come, we'll baptize you later. Just where you are right now, give a little smile to the person beside you and say, Excuse me, I'm going to the front. Come on now, come on, come on. It's going to be easy. You, got, you give me five minutes of your life and I'll give you an eternity with the Holy Spirit. So come now, come on. Oh, come on, people. I know you're here. I know you're here. Come on. Don't be afraid. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on up here. Come up here. Right here. Right here. Come on. Come on. Face me up here. Face them. You don't, you don't have to look at them. You can look at me. Side by side. Don't get me behind anybody. Side by side. Come on closer. Come on closer. I promise not to bite. Yeah, I promise not to bite. Side by side. Go all the way over there. All the way over here. Side by side. There you go. Okay. There you go. There you go, buddy. Now, look over here. Look over here. Open your hands like this. Go like this. Whew, hallelujah. 
if I got it here, <laughs> if I got to here, it's because all the barriers have already fallen, okay? So now what are we going to do? We're going to receive what Jesus said. He said, if you ask me for bread, I will not give you a rock. And this he spoke of the Spirit. He said, if you ask me to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I won't let something else happen to you. So you cannot be wrong, okay? You can't blow it. You can't do something wrong here. Because Jesus is here, and he's authorizing you to speak in that new language. Go ahead, give me that smile. Come on, I know. Come on, you got it there. You got it. Go ahead, dude. It's not going to hurt you. I promise. There you go. Good for you. Go for it. Okay, now say with me. Say with me. Jesus... I believe your promise. I don't have to cry. I don't have to wait. I have to receive. And I want to receive. I believe it's today. And that's why this smile says, Thank you, Jesus. Look at me now. Come on, don't look down there. There's nothing down there. Look up here. Nothing up here. Come on. Say, I believe you, Jesus. You promised. Why not? I need your power. I seek truth. And your spirit is truth. And therefore, I'm just going to thank you in English. And I'm going to start a new language. Just, just like that. Just like that. I'm going to start a new language. Okay? So just say, thank you, Jesus. I receive... You've authorized me, and therefore I can speak this new language. In Jesus' name, just begin. Go ahead. It's there, buddy. Don't have to think about it. It's not here. It's here. Yeah, all your eyes open. Eyes open. Yeah. Say, thank you, Jesus. Don't look at other people. You're receiving. You're receiving. Yes, keep going. That smile says, I'm receiving. Yeah. Igreja. Begin to talk in tongues, Igreja. Begin to speak in languages. A new language, Igreja. Turn your, hand, turn your hands this way. Shalama, Yalama Makaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I receive now. Shalama na Yalama Makandai. Receive now. Receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't have to even think. It's there. Hallelujah. Shalama na Yalama Nanandaya. Isto. Go ahead. Go ahead. Shandara Mamakaya. There you go. Keep going, buddy. Keep going. It's Jesus. Shalama Nakaya. Put so here can no doesn't there's no pain involved. Yalama, yala. My sound louder so God can hear it. God needs to hear it. You need to hear it. And the devil needs to hear it. Let's go. Hallelujah. There you go. Shalama na yalama makaya. Ke yalama masi yalana naya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Shandara Mamakaya. Mais alto, mais alto. Para Deus ouvir, você ouvir, e o diabo ouvir. Kandriya Mamakaya, isto. Kalamana, that's it, brother. Hallelujah, there you go. Why not? Why not? Shalamahai, Yandara Makaya, Lala, Sialanaya. Kialamahan, Yandara Mamakaya. Yaramasiriya Mamakaya. Mais alto. Deus precisa, God needs to hear it. You need to hear it. The devil needs to hear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go for it. Hallelujah. Good. Good. Abre entonces. Hallelujah. Shala amani kalamanaya la halalakai. Siria mamakaya. Receive. Receive. Shandara mamananaye. Hala mamakaya. Começa a falar em voz alta. Isto. Isto. Go, 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 go. Go. I'm sorry, baby. I'm trying. Uh, English, hallelujah. Go for it, guys. Come on. Smile and go that new language. I'm so used to do it in Portuguese. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Pastor Jonathan, you want to come and help? Pastora, all the pastors, Pastor Keese, if you guys want to help, 
just go ahead and put your hands on them now. We don't have a whole lot of time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now just begin to talk. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Eyes open. Smile on your lips. You say, I'm receiving a present. I'm receiving a present. Jesus would never lie to me. Jesus would never lie to me. Do you believe that? Jesus would never lie to me. <laughs> receive it. Receive it. Receive him. Receive him. Receive the Holy Spirit. Yalamakai. Don't stop. Please, I need your help. Don't stop. Keep talking in tongues. Please. I need your help. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus promised it. Are you up here to receive? Are you here to receive? Come, please. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're doing great. Keep going. But do it out loud. Do it out loud. You guys here? Open your hands. Open your hands. Say, yes, Jesus. It's now. It's now. I believe. Just believe. Just believe. You begin to talk that new language. It's there. It's there. I was filled when I was 13. 12 to 13 years old. How many years old? Huh? 13. Okay, buddy. Same age as me. Go for it. Shalamanai. Yala hai. Kikalamamakaya. Sidi Yalamamakaya. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Look at me. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Jesus loves you. Say yes, Jesus. You're smiling at me, Jesus. I'm smiling at you. Thank you, Lord. Halanai. Ki alamananda hai. Begin that new language. It's there. It's yours. It's yours. Jesus gave it to you. Jesus gave you. Open that hand. Yes. You with them, buddy? Open those hands. Let me see them open. Good. Go for it. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Hey, hey. Be saved. Be filled with the Spirit. Say, I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, even of my tongue. He's Lord. And I'll speak a new language. Hadamai. Kikalalai. Just begin. It's there. It's there. Kandaralakaya. Nothing can hold you back. Nothing, no one can keep you from receiving. Just start talking, buddy. It's there if you'll receive it. Just like salvation, you'll never see it. You'll receive it. Okay? Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Did you give up? Let's go. Come on. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive him. Receive the Holy Spirit. Igreja, church, raise your hands, church. Stand your hands this way. Say, yes, Jesus, we believe. We receive, even now, this gift, this present, Lord. We break through the bondage. We break through the barriers. And we say, nothing, nothing can keep me from being loved by Jesus. Nothing, nothing can impede me. Go for it, dude. Go on. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Come on. Out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. Come here, buddy. Give me your hand. And you. Let's go. Let's go now. English, no. Spanish, no. Portuguese, no. That new language. There's no fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. You cannot do something wrong. You cannot say something wrong. In this place, there's nothing you can say wrong. Only praising Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, big guy. Give me your hand right here. Give me your hand. Look at my face. Look at my eyes. <laughs> you are loved. You are loved. And Jesus wants to give you a present. You will take his present or not? You want to receive his presence? 
You know, he wants to save you and fill you with the Holy Spirit. You understand that? Me and Candace. And just say, Jesus, thank you. I receive your goodness, your spirit upon me. Just suit me just a minute. Can I can I give you a big hug? You're a loved man. You're precious. Jesus brought you here today. Josea Preciosa. Jesus brought you here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The barriers have been broken. There are no walls that separate you from Him. You are forgiven. You are blessed. And you are filled with the Spirit. You are blessed. You are filled right now. Kalamani, kalamanai, ki kandalalakai. Believe it, my brother. Believe it. Believe it. You are my brother. You are my brother. You are loved. Believe it. Receive it. Say yes, Jesus. Shalom, kandarai. Kialamai. Loud, out loud. Kandarai. Yalamamakai. Go for it, dude. It's now or never. Let's go for it. It's God loving you. It's now. It's the time. Shandaria Babara Babakaya, Ki Alamananda Lahai, Ki Alamamakaya, Sidi Alamamakaya, Ki Alamamakaya, Uri Alamamakaya. Receive, receive. Church, don't get tired because these are your friends. These are your fam. This is your family. Extend your hand this way, church. Extend your hand this way. Say, we bless you. You are our family. We bless you. Halam Hanai, Handari Alamama Kandara Mamakaya, Sidi Alamama Kaya. Go ahead, bro. Just break through. Just break through. Halana Ki Alamanaya, Hi Alamama Kandara Laye. Hallelujah. Some of you can sing easier than you can talk. Shandara Mama Shandara La Igreja. Church, sing with me, church. Ye alamana nahaya, ki alamama kanda de yalala kaya, ki alamama kaya. There is no sadness in forgiveness. There is no sadness. There is no turning back when you are in love. Jesus said you are in love. Can you hear that? Can you hear him saying you are in love? What's your name? Carolyn? Leave your hands open like this with palms, your palms upwards so you can receive and he can take away what he needs to take away and he can give you what he needs to give you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could I help you? Can I help you? Why not? I don't know. Can I help you? 
Huh? That's okay. But like this is the way you receive. That way you're given to somebody. Are you praying for somebody that's up here? you've given up let's receive so let's just do it my way i'll appreciate it i'll appreciate it okay you got it go for it it's all yours excuse me hallelujah 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 <laughs> don't be tired don't be tired renew your strength there you go. I love you, Jesus. He loves you too. But speak that new language to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Allah mani Allah. Hey kandala babarashanda. Yes, yes. Say yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Shalama makaya. Ki kalama manaya. Ki alababakaya. Over and over. He said, I have loved you. I have called you. I have hugged you, held you in my arms. Now, speak my truth. Speak my truth. Speak my truth. Not by your brains, not by your intelligence, not by your capacity, but through me, through your weakness, I am strong. When you are weak, I am strong. Let Jesus be strong for you today. Let Jesus be strong for you today. Shalom, Ani. Just start out, bro. You can't do it wrong. Believe me. You can't do it wrong. Let it be. Let it be. It's now. It's now. It's now. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Kudia Mamakaya. Some of you look like you're sad. This is one of the best days of your life. Hallelujah. Open those hands up. Open that heart up. You open your hands because you open your heart. You open your hands because you open your heart. And you say, I'm open. I'm open. I receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. One more time. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. The Lord's going to give you peace. But he wants you to remember, this is not its over moment. This is a beginning moment. This is a door opening moment to all that he has for you. Gifts of the Spirit. Move the Spirit in your life. But this is the beginning. Salvation. Baptism in water. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's the Peter package. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Hey, hey, before you go, give a clap hands to Jesus and say, it's not over. It's not over. It's not over because it is well with my soul. Come on, somebody. I told you, didn't I? I told you. I told you. God is so good. I look at the the altar here and I, I know most of you and I'm so stinking proud of you. So proud of you. Thank you for having the courage. It's crazy. The gospel, the Bible says it's foolishness to the unbelievers, but it's the power of God for those who believe. It takes a step of courage to do what you did. And can I tell you, we're all different. We all have different personalities. Some of us are extroverts. Some of us are introverts. Our experiences are all unique. Some people, man, we, we didn't even say go, and they were speaking in tongues. Some of you guys are barely muttering. Like, bu, 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 bu. It's all good, though. It's like riding a bike. You begin to practice it, and you begin to step out, and the more you do it, the more you become a little more comfortable with it. 
praying in your spiritual language. It's a, it's a process and you begin to just flow. You go at your pace. You go at your pace. But can I tell you, don't park it. Don't leave today and say, okay, that was my experience Sunday morning. You begin to practice it. I love what Pastor Mike just said. Man, it's in the Holy Spirit is in us. He wants to flow through us. What an awesome thing. And the purpose, it's the power of God. God wants to empower you. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. Someone say, practice makes perfect. Practice the presence. If doctors practice medicine, we get to practice the presence. Amen, somebody? And as you continue to step out, I'd love to encourage you. Listen to some worship music and just begin to pray in tongues. It helps me because I'm terrible with lyrics. <laughs> you know, so I sing it in tongues many times. You practice it. For those of you who came and you made a commitment to Jesus today, I'm so proud of you as well. Maybe you were distant from God and you said, I'm, I'm choosing to trust Him and follow after Him today. I'm proud of you. Some people in the room maybe didn't pray that prayer. I'm going to lead us in that prayer as we do every Sunday. Maybe your story is one of these two scenarios. Maybe you never gave Jesus the opportunity to be the designated driver in your life. You've been your, you've been your own boss. You've called all the shots on your own. And you recognize you need Him today. Maybe that's your story. Or maybe the second scenario. Maybe at some point you invited Him to be the Lord of your life. But you hijacked the steering wheel. You've been calling the shots on your own. And He hasn't been the Lord of your life. And you're saying, I need to get right with Him today. Maybe that's your confession. I'm going to lead us all in this prayer. I'm going to invite our entire church all throughout the facilities to pray with me. Amen? Let's pray together. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for coming after me. Today I open my heart. I invite you into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I repent of all my sins and all my selfish ways. I surrender fully to you. Be the Lord of my life from this moment forward. And help me, Jesus, to make a difference in someone else's life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's tell all of our friends, congratulations. Amen, amen, amen. If that was your prayer today, either for a first time or a prayer rededication, would you do me a favor and grab one of those red cards all on the back of every chair in the auditorium? Just fill out your name and your information on that card and bring it to Carla, who's at the Fresh Start booth. She has a jump start kit for you. I think that everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs uh, some help to take the next steps. And through that little jump, jump start kit, there are gifts inside, little books, some gift cards, literally gift cards. And that we're going we're gonna to have someone call you, reach out to you to help you take the next steps in this journey of faith that you just uh, agreed to. So God bless you guys. We are officially dismissed in about five minutes. Our next steps VIP room will open up. If you want to get involved in Dream Team and be a part of our church and call this your home church, come to our next steps. Our pastors and leaders will be there. For the rest of us, have a wonderful week. We will see you guys next time. God bless you.